So hey everybody, Feature Friday, we're uh, going to do part two of the application framework. We're going to talk through the uh, anatomy of the XML file. So apologies for taking a little while to get it to you. I've been on travel and such, and uh, so we're going to take a casual approach to this one. So hopefully it's helpful. Okay, so the first thing I'd like you to do is to go to this URL out on the IBM website. The URLs may change over time, but if you search for the topic Application Anatomy XML File in the context of Maximo Application Suite, in particular Manage, then you'll find the information that we're going to be looking at. So let's start with the Tech Mobile application. We're going to look at the elements within the app.xml that defines this specific application. As a reminder, the Tech Mobile application appears as three tiles in the navigator, My Schedule, Materials and Tools, and the Map. Let's start with the Properties section. The properties listed in the XML are those system properties that impact the behavior of the mobile application. The values for the properties are set on the server, not within the application, so there's not much to look at here. Of course, you will find these properties on the server by way of the familiar Manage, System Configuration, Platform Configuration, and then System Properties. Now let's go look at the States section of the XML. This is where global variables are defined that are available for all of the application pages to use. While these global states are important to know about, Know that when we get to the individual pages later on, they too will have state declarations for the specific pages that make up the application. Also, when we get to the individual pages, you'll find that some fields on the record are being combined together into a single field by way of these state declarations. The Menus section of the XML defines the tiles that appear for the application in this case, for the Tech Mobile app. Here is where the three tiles are defined. My Schedule, Materials and Tools, and the Map. Also, under Menus are any actions that this specific application contributes to the Action menu. That's the plus sign in the upper right corner. For this specific application, it only contributes the single Create Work Order action. You'll notice there's two on the list. That's because on my system I have two versions of the Tech Mobile application. One is out of the box, the other is a modified application I'm using for development purposes. The Data Sources section of the XML defines where the application gets the data presented to the user. Keep in mind as well that when we get to the individual pages, they can have data sources declared as well. Here is where you can see the underlying MX API object structures that the application will query data through. This is also where you can see any stored queries on the object structure that the API calls will execute as well as the attributes that are returned to the mobile application. The Pages Container section of the XML is a collection point for all of the pages that make up the application. It's just a single line of code, so there's not much to talk about here. Now each page of the application is defined in the XML. Here is where you can see information specific to each page and each of the elements that it needs to pull data and then eventually render for the user. It is within this section of the XML where you will probably spend most of your time if you're making refinements to how the applications look to the user. All right, so let's take a look at these individual pages. So you'll notice that each page that you'll become familiar with um, is clearly described on its own. My work today, 
the tasks, materials and tools, work order, and all the way down. So there's quite a few pages that make up this application. Let's open up My Work Today, or the default name is My Schedule. So I open that up, and I can see that this page definition has states, it has data sources, there's a header that I'm going to come back and talk about, as well as some different panels to display information to the user, and then the dialogues, the things that show up over on the left-hand side when you're doing some data entry. I'm going to go ahead and click on states, and you can see over here on the right side, just like we saw previously, that the states are clearly defined. These are your variables that the page is going to be using to present information to the user. There's your data source, data sources, I should say. One thing you'll notice is that you may find some of these data sources, um, they will define an override. So you have an original data source, but then there's some more information that is used on the data source to perhaps do some further filtering. And you can see over here on the right examples uh, of that as well. Okay. If I move down to the header, okay. We can start to see some definitions of the, um, of the drop-downs that are also uh, present uh, in the different pages as well. So you can see there's a, a drop-down item or a menu item in the uh, application. You know, my assigned work today, the PMs that are due this week, that sort of thing. One thing to be cautious of, and a particular example in the tech mobile application, is down here at line 574, there is an include statement. And you'll notice that include statement is pointing to yet another XML file. That particular XML shows all the, the details of the, uh, the list of work orders, and I'll bring that up here in just a moment. But be aware that you may have a situation where you've got some includes and some XMLs out there that provide other uh, descriptive information about the app. It's very subtle, but you'll notice up here at the top, I'm in app XML, and over here on the right-hand side, if I do a drop-down, I can click into the card group XML. Okay, I'll leave that up to you for exploration, uh, but just be aware that uh, not every definition of the application or every piece of the application is in app.xml there may be these uh, external XMLs as well. And to see them in edit, you just click on it, and it'll show up, and there it is. Okay, so you can jump back and forth. Okay, and then finally, we'll just go to Dialogues, and this is where you're able to see the particular um, dialog boxes that pop up in the application. And uh, again, we'll uh, jump to that here in the video in, in just a moment and you're able to manipulate those as well. Okay. So again, each page that makes up the application has its own state declarations, data sources, maybe some overrides, um, certainly the header, the, the basic structure of the application, um, and then some panels and some dialogues to manipulate as well. So each page has a lot of different pieces to it. And finally, any messages that need to pop up to the user are also defined in the XML. Don't be confused. These are not Maximo messages that are sitting over on the server. These are specific to these applications. And here's what they look like in the code. If you scroll down through, you'll get a sense of what types of messages the user will be seeing as they use the application. So there you have it. Within that app.xml, of course, you have the properties, the states, the menus, the data sources, your individual pages, and all of the elements that they need individually. And then finally, you have the messages. And that's the bulk of what's in the app.xml file. So that was a look at the XML files themselves. There's actually more to those applications than just the XML files. There are JavaScript files actually on the server as well. We'll take a look at that in probably part four when we open it up, open the container up. 
with uh, a proper development environment like uh, Eclipse or VS Code, that sort of thing. Anyway, hope this part was helpful and uh, let us know if we can do anything for you. Thank you.